Today's daf is daf kuf chaf ches. Yesterday um, we learned that the Rav himself, <clears throat> on numerous occasions, said that he didn't learn something correctly, and he's and the next following day he changed his mind. So yesterday we um, we learned the top of the page kuf chaf ches of an Allah, where somebody says somebody ha- was holding on to an evid, and the teveya claimed. What are you doing with my Evid? And obviously the borrower, this person who was holding on to the Evid said, I bought it from you. I bought it from you. And then um, and then the way it should be is, we didn't say this correctly yesterday, that person who's holding on to the Evid, known as the Masik, turns to today and says, I am uh, prepared to listen to, if you're prepared to swear that the Evid originally was yours, I will return, I'll give it back to you. There's a machlek is a shame whether the guy actually swore or even if the guy didn't swear. Just the fact that I granted you permission to do that in front of a bezin and I said, you swear, you take, just litto is enough. And he can no longer change his mind. And we said the same thing applies to a a, a bezin where we accept a yonim that are not, that are disqualified in our case. For example, my father, your father. But once we've accepted that they should run, run, I cannot change my mind. Even in the case of Etzin Lecha, where the case was, I owe you money, and they rule that I owe you the money, I can no longer change my mind, and that's the halach. Okay, we are up to the Gemara here. These are a number of cases that they sent, that he sent to, uh, to Rabbi Yasef, asking all kinds of questions, whether the, the halach is like this or the halach is not like that. So we're going through a number of cases, and uh, we're up to now the Gemara here, Kuf Chav Ches Amal Aleph, Sholach Le Rab Abba Le Rab Yisab Acham. Rab Abba sent to Rab Yisab Acham, who is the Rab Yisab that we all know. He sent him a bunch of questions or, or laws. And interesting, we have no comment to Rab Yisab himself. It's others who, who stepped in and maybe you know either argued and argue, but at the end of the day, we'll find out the halacha in all of these cases is like Rab Abba. Number one, halacha. We remember we had a machlekes if avodim. Slaves are compared to karka, they're an asset, or they're compared to metalkali. Now, in many dinim, they're like karka. For example, you don't swear on property, you don't swear on avodi. There's no aino, there's no cheating when it comes to uh, um, property, there's no aino when it comes to avodi. So the question is as follows When it comes to a lender, if a lender lends money, and, uh, and there's a lien now on the properties. Is there also a lien on the Ebed? If, for example, if the borrower has no cash to pay, can you go in and uh, and take the Ebed or not? So, so look at Rabbi Abba, Rabbi Abba says, Rabbi Yisabar Chama. And he said that, Halacha goivin min havodim. The halacha is that you can collect, you can collect from avodim. You, you, you lend money, you can, if the guy has no money to pay back, if there's no properties to take, you can seize the Ebed. And Amachman says, Engleifer. Amachman says, You do not seize the Evid. We'll soon see in the Gemara later what really happened. Because here the Allah is like Amachman. What do you mean, Engleifer? Because even though in many respects an Evid has the same din like Karka, but when it comes to a loan, the lender is not saying Mechdas, is not really relying that he is going to be able to collect. That Evid might run away. He's, he's not, it's not what he, it's not the reason why he, that he doesn't feel secure. With an evidence, but the property is always there. So therefore, he says, "Ain't even in this respect, it's not like kaka." Number one, number two. Shalach later, Abba Rabbi Yisrochamah, Rabbi Abba said to Rabbi Yisrochamah, "Halach, we know that relatives cannot say edus about each other, right? A kind of is he can't say edus, but halach a shlishi v'sheni kosher." Now, the way most of Shain learn, you have two, you have two brothers. That's called a rishon berishon. Then the the nephew to the uncle is called a Rishon Bishani. The nephew is a second generation, and the uncle is a first. So it's a Rishon Bishani. That's no good. But an Enikal, a grandchild, a grandchild is a Shlishi. A Shlishi, and in and and no, it's the first cousin once removed. You have Reuven and Shimon, Reuven's grandson, and Shimon's son, they are one co- first cousins once removed. That's called a Shlishi. The grandson is a Shlishi. And the, 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 the son is a Shani. And he's saying that a Shlishi and a Shani is kosher. First cousins is where the Isa goes to, a Shani, Bishani, and no more. But a Shlishi, Bishani, is permitted. Rather than adds another layer. We'll see later in the Gemara. He's not arguing, he's just adding. That Afbarishan, that a Shlishi, in, no, it was a great uncle. A nephew in a great uncle is permitted. Because it's two generations apart. Mar uh, Barabashi. Ma'abra Bashi goes, if two generations are part, a mutter, he says, like a bigger chiddish. 
a grandson and a grandfather. He says, because two generations apart. So Shlishi, it's, it's a Shlishi edition. It's not even an edition, it's years eight, because two generations apart. However, the Gemara says, because when we say, it's Bonim. Big Machlech is Rishonim. So how far do we take this? What about a, a great grandchild? Remember, we'll have Gemara. Well, oh, sorry, remember we'll have Gemara Sanhedrin that a grandfather's Rachmanus only goes to a, a grandchild, not to you know a great grandchild. So how far do we take it? So the Rashbab holds even a great 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 great, great grandchild. I, you know, nevertheless, they're related because it's all one. Everything that comes from you is all one. However, Taysa disagrees, and he says, um, if you look at Taysa, let's he says, no, only two generations, no more than that. <clears throat> says the Gemara further, but now, what's interesting is that Bain Gershim, that Bain Gershim learns that a Shlisha, just show you here, unless I'm learning wrong here, that Bain Gershim says here, uh, Hilchus, if you look at this left side here, Hilchus a Shlishi B'Sheni Kashel. So the way we learn Shlishi B'Sheni, well, most of learn Shlishi is a grandson, uh, a third generation of grandson, and you know, it was first cousin once removed. Reuben, Shimon, Arishim, Arishim, Reuben's son and Shimon's son are Sheni B'Sheni, and Reuben's grandson is a Shlishi, to Shimon's son. Look what it says there. Hilchus a Shlishi B'Sheni Kashel. He says, Kigoyim, Reuben B'Shimon, Haim B'Neim, Hainu D'Sheni. The, the, the rabbinic agent says that the first cousins are a shiny. And the rabbinic agent says the grandchildren are, no, the shni means second generation. But second generation doesn't start from the first, it starts from the first children, which is an amazing thing. So he holds that second cousins are, are, are also. They're shneem. A great grandson. And so on and so forth. So he adds another generation. I remember I once did a, a wedding in, in front of 770, and they told me that Zalman Shimon would not even allow third cousins um, at the Be'edim. <clears throat> and you can see here that, you know, that third cousins, according to him, are actually second cousins. You know, he has a whole different cheshman, which is interesting. Interesting way of looking at it. That's, at least that's what it seems from reading here. It seems pretty clear. Says he might have heard, um, um, back to the mother. So the mother clearly says the halach is not like Marashi, it's a straight line, it is forbidden. Next case, let's say I knew Reuven knew exactly Shimon's field, the boundaries of the field, he knew clear. And actually, I remember a blind person can't say hey, this, especially when it comes to. Uh, you know, to measure and all that, can't say it is. So before he became blind, he was able to see and he knew exactly the, the measurements of of your property. Then Minister became blind. So right now, if he walks to the bezin and he testifies, uh, he can't testify what he sees now. He's testifying against something that he knew beforehand. Says so. Um, so Abba said, possibly is possible because right now he's not qualified to say this. Shmuel says, caution. And why? It's possible that he remembers exactly, you know, what the boundaries were, and he's telling us what those boundaries are. Have a gleam of light. When it comes to recognize a, a, a shirt, which is, um, I guess, a, a car is much easier to see the dimensions, you know, the boundaries. On a shirt, it's not so easy to know exactly how many centimeters, how many inches it is. But Rav Sheish says, I feel a gleam of, even a shirt. He can give a simon on the shirt because he maybe he remembers from when he was able to see the measurements of a shirt. Have a nascalay, but a piece of silver, you know, they all look more or less the same. He can't give us that identifying marks. But Papa, but a nascalay, even silver. Why? Evshin Mechav, and Mizrael, he knows the weight. Maybe the size is not a similar, but the weight. So all of these Amaraim are, you have look, you have a good group of Amaraim. You have, you know, starting from um, uh, the Shmuel and onwards, they all think that a blind person can, can testify based on what he knew before. But the Baba's the only one who says he can't. Because right now he's disqualified. What happens if you knew a chosna kibnoi, a son-in-law is like a is like a son, and therefore son-in-law cannot testify on behalf or against his, his father-in-law. So what happens 
he's testifying now about something that he, an event that happened before he was related to him. So, he knew that his father-in-law was owed money before he became his father-in-law. The Nasa Chosni, and then he became a son-in-law. The question is, is he disqualified? Because currently, right now, he can't be an A, but he's testifying about a Maisa that happened prior. Another example. Pikeach, the Nizchadish, a guy who was um, healthy and then became deaf. The Rishayim say, when definitely doesn't mean mute, because uh, mute, then you, you know, Pihem, Belayim, Pik so I'm talking about. He, he, even if he can, knows the Aedis, he cannot be counted as an aid. What about Pikeach, the He was able to see, and then he lost his eyesight. Clark. He was healthy and then he became ill. Um, <clears throat> in all of these cases, it says clearly here, puzzle. Because right now, if, if, if in other words, the Shaila more or less is, and we'll have a lot more about this in Marcus Davo. The Aedis is when you saw, we discussed it once before, or the Aedis is when you come in front of best. Because my Yasu Shnayachin that saw the same event. So it seems from here, it doesn't matter that the, the, the din of Aedis is only. What, it's not that you're coming here to tell us the ages that you saw then. You're, you're now becoming the age, but right now you're disqualified. So you can't be the getter of ages. You can be more the getter, like a beater maybe, but not ages. What happens? I will hold you the What happened? You knew something, an event that happened before he became related. Then Vanessa Chosi became related. And then Vemesa Bitri. And now he's no longer related because the daughter died. So the, so when he saw the event, he was a kosher aid. When he's standing in front of the bezin, he's a kosher aid. But the interim period, he was possible. Or, pikeach when his chadish, the husband is pikeach. Yeah. Healthy, exactly. For a while, he wasn't here, but here, now he can. Or, pikeach when his husband is pikeach. Same thing here. It's blind and, became, you know, good, blind, good. Shofen is tafel, chadish tafel. There was a time that he wasn't good, then it became better, and then and now, uh, sorry, the time that he was good, Came, then became, became ill, then became better. <clears throat> There's a whole shayla. If the reason why you're better is because of pills, extraneous things, are naturally what, how do we view that? Mm-hmm. Uh, Zach Cloud, this is the rule. Mm-hmm. The beginning, the mice of the, or the standing in front of the beds and you were disqualified, no good. Oh, but in other words, as if to say, Aedas begins when you saw, and also when you stand in front of the beds. Oh, but the beds. The uh, If the, when you saw and when you stand in front of Bezin, the kosher, we don't care what happened in your period. Clearly, like like, like Rababa. Clearly like Rababa, not like all the other Marai. To Yufta, the Kula, to Yufta. And yesterday we pointed out the difference between to Yufta and Kasha. To Yufta means subjective. And even so, we had a few times the Gemara, the Gemara says to Yufta, and then the Gemara continues the discussion based on the other opinion. We had that a few times as well. So, Allah, next, next did. The following cryptic thing it says in the Bible, Oimer al Tinuk ben Abonim. If a guy says, I have a number of children, and one of them was a Tinuk, an infant. And he says something about this infant, never is believed. Now, it doesn't say what actually did he say. And Rabbi Yechon said, Ain't not believed. My karma. What, what's going on here? What's the Bible talking about? What, what does this father say here? What's the Machlekes? So Bayi said, I'll tell you what. Remember, we had what we discussed before, we'll learn in the mission later, that. Rebbe says that if a father chooses one of the children, one of those who are entitled to the Yerusha, and decides to give the person more than what that person is entitled to, you have five children, you decide to give one of them more than the Chalik, partial everybody else, he says he can. You cannot do it to a stranger, but one of those already entitled anyway, you can expand on it and diminish the others. You can do that. And that's what we're talking about here. If the father says, no, I want this Tinuk to Yashin more than anybody else. They're old enough, they have jobs, they have businesses, this kid, you know, starting in life. I want to give him a helping hand. <clears throat> In fact, I want to know the is believed. And Rabbi Yechonon says, Why? That's the Machlech. In fact, he chose the tin to give it to over everybody else. So the wording is wrong. It's not, it says here, Not Sorry, it says Neman. He's believed. The word is not Neman. The word should be Yerush. Or Yerush. He should Yashin. Neman means he says something about them, whether we can trust them, the father, what he's saying or not. Oh, so this, that's not what Abayah said. Abayah is saying here is, it's, it's not a dispute here. In this case, we all agree with the son, but you have five sons, he decides to give the Yerusha to one son. Then the wording is wrong. So it comes along Rabbi says, Hi, Neman, may Neman, you're the wrong wording. Hello, Rabbi, exactly what you said. 
Ha'oymen al tini. We had a machlekes in the last few days. If there's a, everyone agrees, if we don't know who the who children are, you say this is a We believe you. The Abuda says, even if we are muhsik, even if we accept it till now that Reuben is a bchayr, the father one day wakes up and says, you know, Shimon is a bchayr. The Abuda says he's believed. Yakir, Yakir means he can make us recognize. And, and the Chacham says he's not believed, and that's the machlekes here. Ha'oymen al tini ben abanim bchayru. He says on the tini, this is actually my bchayr. I guess the only way you can really say that is if everyone else is unreal, my children. Somebody else's children. Mm-hmm. How else can it be bchay? <clears throat> Neman, he's believed could have Yehuda, and Rabbi Yehuda says, "Ain't never could have born him." Continue. Shalom le Rabbi Rabbi Yisrael Bar Chamam. Oimed, if a person says, "Okay, me not the children Yashu the father, not the wife," but if a man says, "Titel ishti keechem min abon," the man said that I want my wife to be no different than any of the other children. In other words, I have four children. I want my estate to be divided into five parts, and my wife should get one chayla. He can do that. Because remember before, you can give her a matan anyway, matachai. Noitelas ke'ech minabani. She takes like one of the children. In other words, yes, she's equal. Now comes along Rabbi Sagis. Omar Rabbi, uben nechassim shal achshim. He's not arguing, he's explaining now. When it comes to which assets is, is she entitled to get a chayla? Only the assets that he had up to that point. Any assets that beyond that point is a dobe shalab aloyla. And we, we, it's not, and we don't pass like a mayor, and you cannot transfer. So she's only entitled to all the assets that he had up to the point when he made the statement. On the other hand, let's say he made a statement when you know, he was madly in love with her at the age of 40, lived till the age of 80, and in the meantime, he had another five kids. So do we say, since when it comes to the assets, you, the 40-year-old, that's the date that she, um, that she doesn't get anything beyond that, do we all say the number of children that he had at that time, that's how you split it. So if he had four children, then another four afterwards. Do we say we split, as far as she's concerned, we imagine only those four children, the divide the estate into five parts, she gets okay. one, and then afterwards, pool together everything, you know, all the new assets together, all the assets, the other four parts, and then you divide that amongst eight children. Or do we say, no, when it comes to Yerusha, it only, we look at how many children there are at the time of the distribution. So if at the time the distribution was eight, even though the time when he said it was four, we divide the property to nine parts, and she gets one part, but only the old stuff. The new stuff she's not even part of. And that's what he says here. <clears throat> because we learned right before that Yerusha does not take place until the person passes away. <clears throat> and you raise the distribute. Then you want further. Um, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Reuben produces a star. Before we learn this, we had a machlekes in Bar Babatia, an interesting machlekes between Rabbi Lazar and Rabbi Kira. What happens? We learned the concept there about Maidim and Mixer, right? I ask you for hundred dollars, and you say fifty dollars. I owe you the other fifty. I don't know what you're talking about. So we say this a Maidim and Mixes, and that means you you admit the partial partial uh, claim. The din is that, uh, and you owe the fifty dollars obviously, but you have to swear that you don't owe the rest, and that's a shvua mahatayra. Like Rabbi says, me pnei ma Maidim is a tiny shop. Okay, that's the Gemara we had that Gim. Then we had a concept is called Halich, the next page, Rabkhir. What happens? The guy says, I owe you 50, and here it is. So uh, the moment I say here it is, I'm not there's no longer partial claim, because that part of the claim is over. I removed it. So now all we're debating now is fifty dollars. And I'm a Kray for Hakal on fifty dollars. We had a because the fifty dollars that I admitted to, I removed from the table because I paid you out straight on the spot. So they have of Sheshis and others, whether Halich is, is also considered made in the mixes or Halich is different, like a Kavir Hakko. Then we had a price like this. A guy wrote a star, and by mistake, he forgot to write the number. I lent you dollars. Forgot to write how many. So uh, what happens? The, so the Loiva says, the Malva says, you owe me five dollars. I forgot to write uh, how many, but you owe me five dollars. Let's make it five hundred dollars. And, uh, and the Loiva says, I owe you three hundred dollars. Rabbi says, well, you're made the mixes, right? I asked for 500, you're made the 300. Rabbi Akiva says, you're a Meshiv Aveda. If he wanted, he could have said $200, and the star is backing him up. In fact, why does the star admit empty. Uh, empty? Because min- minimum of, of, of uh, plural is two. So if there's no number by the star, forget it. sounds like the, all the others 200. If he offers a third hundred, he's a mensch. A Meshav Aveda. And if it's a Meshav Aveda, why should he swear on the balance? You're discouraging people for being honest. He'd rather than say 200, not pay any, and because nobody likes to swear. So we had a machlekes here. Getting back to our case here. What happened was, 
instead of Ashtar, you had actually Edim here. You had Edim, and the Edim say the following. Interesting case. So Reuben produces a star to Shimon and says, you owe me $100. I have the star here, it's intact, you haven't paid anything. And the loyva oima loyva says paraiti machzer. I paid half, right? Loyva be mixes. You got to swear. But what happened was the Aiden came afterwards. The Aiden should a cooler. In this case, the Aiden come along and say, Shimon, you owe no money because we remember you paying him off. Now we have a din he does baldin kimeya Aiden dummy, which means that uh, even the Aiden can stand for trade tomorrow and say whatever they want. If I'm Moida, I owe you the money. I owe you the money. He does baldin kimeya Aiden dummy. So the Chayda, he's saying he owes fifty dollars. He owes fifty dollars, but does he have to swear on the balance? Because the agent say you you don't owe it. He's saying I owe you fifty, and um, and and so or, um, so, um, so what happens then? Sorry, the lady says I paid you already fifty, so therefore all I owe you now is the balance of fifty. And the agent say you owe nothing. You paid the whole amount, not just fifty. You paid the whole amount. The din is. This is a classical case of major and mixes. He said, I paid you 50, so all I owe you is 50. You're demanding 100. Now, the, the labor swears, and and, um, and 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 what do you call it? The Malva, if he doesn't, so the Malva then goes ahead and collects that $50 that he still owes him, let's say. And he does not, but he does not take it from the from the, from the Lukuchas people board. Because Lukuchas can say, two agents came in and said, you owe nothing. Why in the world do you have a right to come and take the fifty dollars from us? In fact, we believe that there's some kanunia. There's a deal going on here between the borrower and the lender. The agents say you owe nothing, and now suddenly the borrower is, oh, is admitting he owes money. Probably some dealer they're trying to get the properties back. They found out these are good properties or whatever about to be rezoned, and they want it back. So therefore, we don't have to pay. So the, 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 the malva only has the right to go after the labor personally, but not after any of the kuchus. So. <clears throat> No, the because the labor says I still owe you fifty. That fifty that he so he swears that the fifty I paid you, I taka paid you, right? So that I paid you, and then the fifty that he still owes, the malva collects, but he cannot collect from the kuchas. Al mishmadunai, why the amri the the buyers say anan I aid the sachina. We trust the aidim, but you don't owe the money. Then Igmar says, "Afilu le Rabbi Akiva, even Rabbi Akiva that says meishiv aveda have the guy's a nice guy." Now look at over here also. If he would have said I owe you nothing. We believe because two agents come along and say that he owes nothing, right? He pay, fully paid up. So the fact that he's honest and says, I, I, listen, I only paid you 50, but I still owe you an outstanding amount of $50, isn't, does not make him a nice guy? Does not make him a nice guy? So according to Rabbi Kiva, he shouldn't have to swear over here. Says he, isn't that very similar to the case of that star? Says he, no. That's talking about a case of the star. He knows what the star says. There's no agent, so therefore, he's a nice guy. He knows he could have gotten away with saying $200, and he said 300 is a nice guy. Over here, the agent haven't said anything yet. You know there's agent out there. You don't know what they're going to say. You don't know what they're going to say, because if you knew that they say they could pay the whole amount, you would have agreed. No, boss, you probably don't know what they're going to say. You're scared. They say you still owe $100. So therefore, you know, exactly what the guy is claiming. So therefore, you thought, you know, you'll wiggle your way out of it. I will hechadi ke'edim. It does say it is. He's scared. He doesn't know what the edim will say. Therefore, he's offering more. And therefore, it doesn't make him a nice guy when he's offering $50, because maybe he thinks that the edim are here to support the Malva, that he still owes 100 Remember, the Malva's claiming $100. You didn't pay me a cent. Now, two edim, then Malva said, I'm bringing witnesses here. So uh, I heard that witnesses out there, you know, they should come in. The labor doesn't know. It's a, it's, a, it's a risk. So it doesn't make him a nice guy. When there's a risk and he's trying to uh, take care of himself, it doesn't make him a nice guy. I can argue for Ketan logic. Even if Shimon Lazar holds that in the case of the star, you're not a nice guy because the star says, you know, hundreds of dollars, doesn't say a number. And you said $300, doesn't make you a nice guy. The guy is claiming $500. And the fact that you're made to $300 makes you a Moida Mixes. That's talking about there's no witness of the Kamisayele. Because the star is pirate. It doesn't say 200, it says nothing. There. There's just no number. Maybe the Leva knows what the Adim are about to say. Because he heard the witnesses there. Maybe he tried to find out, you know, what are they going to say? Since he knows our Adim who are going to help him, then even Abulazavadim Meshavadim should be Takapata. I'm arguing. I think in this case, according to everybody, he's Mamash, a nice guy. Two witnesses come and say, yo, nothing. 
and he says, I owe $50, even though he didn't hear you, but what they're saying, maybe word on the street, maybe, you know, he did some homework. And therefore, if he admits to still owing money, makes him really a nice guy. I, I disagree with that, with that Every letter that Rabbi Abba sent to Rabbi Yisif, interesting, Rabbi Yisif didn't say a word. He sent him letters to Rabbi Yisif, the singer, which I guess he agrees him or not. Not a word. Everybody else joined in. Abaya, Rabbi, everyone, except Rabbi Yisif. Usually, till now, he was never shy. I mean, we have Rabbi Yisif everywhere. Anyway, unless Rabbi Yisif agreed, in every case, this is nothing for him to say. Um... <clears throat> it says the Gemara. Um, case that asks an interesting question. In the case of we, the halach is that halach is different than Maidim Mixus. Because, as I told you, when you say the, the, the rumor says you owe me $100, Shimon says, um, Here's 50 and I don't owe you any more than that. And here is the $50. Right? So um, we had a machlekes. And the halach is that when I gave you the $50 out of for Mark, I said, I gave you the $50, I don't owe you anymore. So your claim now is no longer for 100 You have a claim now for only 50 And we're arguing. I say, I owe you nothing. So I'm a kafer hakel, I'm a total denier, and I am potter. So the face has a question. You have a shtachayv. Reuven, the lender, has a shtachayv in his hand. Shtachayv is very strong, right? It's as if you have a, a lien on the property and so on. Shimon says, $50 of that, I paid you. Your fifty dollars I paid you, and 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 uh, and I still owe you fifty dollars, and I'm telling you hold on to the star for that fifty dollars. It's as if I'm saying halach because the star gives you the right to collect my property. So th- as if I'm saying here it is, here take it. In the Gemara, then Bob says I gave you cash, I paid you off. But here I'm giving you the star, which is, you know, we had before our star kigovud domin as if you collected already. So isn't that a case of halach? So it's so interesting. Constantly in Shas, we have to split hairs to say when we say the Shtar as if you already collected. Remember, Beishama is the one who says in, in, in Satan of Chofeide that a Shtar by, by Shubhide, he says that a Shtar is as if you collect your Gobidum. Hill says no. That Allah is like Hill. And yet, so many places we continuously say how the Shtar makes it so strong as if he already has it. You know, so. We have to constantly split hairs. That this star of here, on the one hand, it's so strong the Malva has it. On the other hand, it's not really Halich because you still have to collect, still have to collect it. So it's not Halich is Mamish. I paid you off on the spot. I gave it to you. <clears throat> and uh, in fact, there's a shit of Rashi there in Bamatzi and some Rashonim that if I didn't spend the money yet, even if it's sitting in my pocket, if I didn't spend the money yet, that's Halich also because calls my Milvilla Haitzon is only after I use the money. Then it's it's a like, so, yeah, but, but if I didn't use the money, it's still sitting on my desk, a shelf there. Your money, it's your money, so I can say, it's, Yeah, I didn't use the money, that's halach as well. So, um, so Tayshis is there, they have to split further that that the star on one hand is like you collected, on the other hand, it's not exactly the fact that it's something missing still. When I paid you cash, you have it, but the money is sitting in my house, Tayshis there disagrees because according to Rashi, you still have to collect the money, it's sitting in my house. But that's considered halak. So then you have to figure it another way. Anyway, the halach is always like Rabashi. Like Rababa. Says the Gemara, um, Rabashi, Rabnachman, my. What do you mean? But we, you think that halach like Baba, the case of the Eber, the very first case, where Rabbi Rab Nachman said you cannot collect, a lender cannot collect from an Eber. Rabba says you can. But the halach is like Rab Nachman. If the halach is like Rab Nachman, how can you say the Lord looks like a Baba? You said, and the Baba says you could collect from an Evan. Evan is like an asset. Amalei, you're right. We misread what Rabbi Abba said. Ain't going to master the Rabbi Abba actually said you cannot collect from an Evan because an Evan is like metalkrin. Bechein Amar Rab Nachman and read not that Rab Nachman disputes Rabbi Abba. Bechein Amar Rab Nachman. So you might even say. So when you tell me the halach is like uh, Rab, like Rab, uh, Rab Abba, what are you coming to, ex- to exclude? It cannot exclude those four opinions that are popping all of these others. The Bryce clearly says that they're wrong. So what do you mean? You tell me, oh, the halacha like a as opposed to what we what would we have thought? If let's go through the machlekes. If it's to disagree with Rava, because remember Rava says that not only uh, um, a, a second generation to a first, no, as a first cousin once removed, you can testify. Rava goes further to a great uncle that uh, which is a step closer that a, a grand nephew, a great uh, to a great uncle. 
They can a shlishi berishon. The Gemara says he's not arguing. Maisifu, he's just adding to to what Rabbi Abba says. He's not arguing at all. Either Mar Bar Ravashi, less Hichas Gemara Bar Ravashi. If it's like Mar Bar Ravashi who says that what that a grandson, Mar Bar Ravashi went further, that a grandson can testify for a grandfather two generations apart. The halach is not like Mar Bar Ravashi. Everyone knows that. Um. Ila fukim midishmu and ashesh and a puppy of all these giants and marim there, all them who argue with him, and they all said that a blind person can testify and all that. Hayitaisa, there's a price that already clearly uh, spelled out that they were wrong. So what's the chiddush when you say the halach like a baba? Ela fukim midrabi yechin. Before Rabbi Yechin says he's not if a father says about a child, about a tinik that he's not believed, right? Because he follows hachamim says no, the halach is like Rabbi Yehuda. I want that a father is believed even against the Chazaka that this child is a prayer. And that's a big finish that Rabbi Yehuda should be followed against the Chachamim. But we did say yesterday that these Chacham is only Rameir. So it's, it's a standard Machlek, his two colleagues arguing. Um, and also, Umaskafta Marba Rabashi. Marba Rabashi's question was that the Chayda with a star, even if Shimon Loza, your mama is a nice guy because you have two agents backing you up. No, the halach is not like him. The halach is the other way around. That even according to Rabbi Kiva, that generally you are a nice guy, but over here doesn't make you a nice guy because you don't really know what the agent are about to say because they haven't testified yet. They're coming after you. If the agent would have come to court first and said he owes nothing, that'd be the end of the story. It wouldn't be a case. What's the case here? And if he wants to pay money, go well, give money. Whatever it is, is what was the case? Obviously, the agent came afterwards. He didn't know what the agent were going to say, so therefore it doesn't make him a nice guy. He's worried. He's hedging his bets. You know, I'll, I'll admit half partially. You know, so I don't look so bad. Anyway, 